Hi everyone and welcome back to Back to Space. This is our last video in the series looking into tragic space accidents. This video is about the Challenger explosion. On January 28th, 1986, this was an absolutely awful event known as the most devastating day in the history of space exploration. Let's start with who was on board. The crew consisted of five NASA astronauts, a payload specialist, and a civilian school teacher. This mission carried the designation STS 51L, and it was the 10th flight for the Challenger orbiter. So when the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight, it killed all seven members aboard. But what happened? The disintegration of the vehicle began after a joint in its right solid rocket booster, known as the SRB, failed at liftoff. This failure was caused by a failure of the O-ring seals that used in the joint that were not designed to handle the unusually cold conditions that existed at this launch. The seals failure caused a breach in the SBR joint, allowing pressurized burning gas from within the solid rocket monitor to reach the outside and impinge upon the adjacent S. BR aft field joint attachment hardware and external fuel tank. Basically, it was gonna explode. Then, this led to the separation of the right hand SBR's aft field joint attachment and this structural failure of the external tank. Originally, the Challenger was set to launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on January 22nd, 1986. Six days before its actual launch, delays in the previous mission, STS-61C, caused the launch date to be moved, and then this launch was rescheduled again to January 25th due to bad weather at the Transoceanic Abort Landing Tau site in Dakar, Senegal. NASA decided to use the TAL site at Casablanca, Morocco, but because it was not equipped for night landing, the launch had to be moved to the morning. Predictions of unacceptable weather at Kennedy Space Center on January 26th caused the launch to be rescheduled for 9.37 Eastern Standard Time on Monday, January 27th. Then the planned 27th launch was delayed due to issues with the external access hatch. There was a stripped bolt. By the time that they fixed it, it exceeded the limit for a return to launch abort. Forecast for January 28th predicted an unusually cold morning with temperatures close to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, the minimum temperature permitted for launch. The shuttle was never certified to operate in the temperatures that low. The O-rings, as well as many other critical components, had no test data to support any expectation of a successful launch in such conditions. At a teleconference on the evening of January 27th, Thiokol engineers and managers discussed the weather conditions with NASA managers from KSC and Marshall Space Flight Center. Several engineers reiterated their concerns about the effect of low temperatures on the resilience of these rubber O-rings that sealed the joints of the SRBs and recommended a launch postponement. They argued that they did not have enough data to determine whether the joints would properly seal if the O-rings were cold. And this was an important consideration since the SBR O-rings had been designed as criticality one component, meaning that if there was not a backup of both primary and secondary O-rings failed, their failure could destroy the orbiter and kill its crew. And that, folks, is exactly what happened. Originally, Thiokol management agreed with the engineer on their team, but then the NASA staff opposed the delay, and the NASA claimed they didn't know about their concerns, and the disaster resulted in a 32-month hiatus in the shuttle program and the formation of the Rogers Commission, a special commission appointed by the United States President Ronald Reagan to investigate the accident. They basically found a couple of things. Organizational culture and decision-making processes have been a key contributing factor to the accident with the agency violating its own safety rules. NASA managers had known since 1977 that the contractors designed at the SRBs contained a potentially catastrophic flaw in the O-rings, but they had failed to address it properly. Approximately 17% of the American population witnessed the launch on live television broadcast because of the presence of a high school teacher. The media coverage of this accident was extensive and it was heartbreaking for America and is still heartbreaking to this day. All right, everyone, this was our last video in the series, Most Tragic Accidents in Space. I hope that you guys learned something new about this, and I think that you guys can, throughout all three videos, have a new appreciation for space exploration. Our next video will be a little bit more uplifting, so I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Make sure you like and subscribe.